Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome to today's live session here with me, Scott, the Academic Director at Swoosh English. Hope you're well, hope you're having a great day. It's a lovely Friday, uh, very close to the weekends. I know some of you might be working at the weekend, but hey, it's always nice to have a break if you have some. Also enjoy uh, the end of a week and the beginning of a new one. So, um, first of all, can I just check that everyone can uh, hear me and that also everyone can see me as well? It's the first thing I need to do. I know that everyone can probably hear me and see me from my end. I just need to make sure that people can hear me and see me from your end. So, Jibby has said yes. Super Awurama has said no. My goodness, what's the correct answer? Can you hear me? <laughs> can you see me? I really sincerely hope. Anyway, guys, keep coming, keep the comments coming in. Uh, first of all, I'll confirm that you can hear me and you can see me, which is great. Only needs a couple of you to do so. So Noah Bakarina uh, has said, yes, I can hear and see you. So is uh, Kay Mosey. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, that's all the confirmation that I need. So let's just see him who has joined the stream today. I want to say hello to some of our dear students and candidates today. We have Kay Mosey, we have Rakshini, we have Isra. We have Bina, we have Mavel. Mavel has asked, is this session for nursing? This is for all candidates. It's general medical voc uh, healthcare vocabulary, so it can be applied to all professions, my friend. We have Super Awarama, we have Jibi, as I said already, we have Shamila, we have Leno, we have Sylvan, we have MD Abdullah, we have Grace, Gr Ace. So I'm gonna say hello, Grace, hello to you today. We have, um, let's see who else we have today, Adrian. Adrian, our good friends here again today. Welcome to the session, Adrian. Nice to see you again. We have Maribel. We have Cielo. And up over the other feet a second, we have Safa. We have uh, Prisar. And we have Benita as well. Welcome to everyone today who has joined in on this session today. Thank you very much for joining. How are you guys feeling today? Let me know in the comments. Are you feeling good? Are you feeling confident? Are you feeling tired? Are you feeling motivated, et cetera, et cetera? And let me know how you're feeling about this class today, our last class in our medical vocabulary series before we move on to something better, starting hopefully at the start of April. This is our last medical vocabulary class today. Let me know how you are feeling about the class and if you're feeling good. Oh, GB is saying, feeling good, some positive vibes. Sherry Rose, hello, Sherry Rose, welcome to the session. Has said she's feeling tired today. That's completely understandable. Maribel has said that she feels great with that. A nice, big, strong, lovely face as well. Fantastic, Maribel. Super Awarama said, I am having my OET exam tomorrow and I feel confident. Excellent, Super Awarama. That's fantastic. I wish you the best of luck with your OET exam tomorrow. And I'm happy you're going in feeling very good for your exam. Jiju has said feeling good, which is fantastic. Sherry was also said just finished with the reading and listening class. Was that with Anne-Marie? Hope you enjoyed that class, Sherry Rose. Kay Moses said good and excited to learn some synonyms and antonyms today. That's exactly what we're going to be doing, which is fantastic. Grace has said hello. Safa has said feeling motivated. Vanitha has said feeling good, which is great. Abdullah is saying feeling good as well. Jocelyn said excited, fantastic. Uh, Prasala has said feeling motivated and Jamie, hello Jamie, is from Singapore. I don't know how Jamie is feeling because she or he hasn't said yet. Fantastic. So everyone's feeling quite good. Well done. So guys, before we start the session, throw in the comments. Let me know where you are from, when you're taking your OET exam and how you feel about the exam. Some people are taking the exam tomorrow, such as uh, Super Awarama, as well as Kosta, uh, Kostov. Welcome to the session day, Kostov. Says, have my exams tomorrow. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for you, my friend. I hope it goes excellent for you. We're all rooting for you here to pass your exam. Manny Kato. Hello, Manny. Welcome to the session. And Sherry said, I enjoy the class as well as the essential exam grammar class. Fantastic, Sherry Rose. Very, very good to hear that you're enjoying our brand new grammar classes that we're offering here at Swoosh English. Okay. Oh, Leno, you're very nice. Never been better seeing you, sir, and excited at the same time, knowing that I will gain another knowledge in order for me to ace my OET exam soon. Leno, you are very, very kind. Thank you very much for your kind words and enjoy today's class. And Jamie has said they're feeling excellent as well. Okay, guys, great. So because we only have about 55 minutes, I want to make sure that I get as much of this class 
covered today as possible. Keep the comments coming in. Let me know where you're from when you're taking the OET exam. My team and I will try our best to respond to you in the sessions, but try and make it as lovely and fun, as interactive as possible. And I'll try and, of course, read if I get some time in the comments as I come across to them. So welcome to today's session, everyone. It is, of course, our live OET test. OET. OET, that's right. I was thinking OED. I can't even speak sometimes myself, guys. I know how you guys must feel when you're speaking. Our live OET sessions with myself, Scott, from uh, Swoosh English. Reminder, we are a premium preparation provider, the highest qualification given to uh, lead these classes about OET preparation for yourselves to ace your exams. Let's get into today's class. So remember, this is part of a live vocabulary series, and we've done lots of other previous classes on uh, medical vocabulary and healthcare vocabulary. They include medical idioms, part one and part two, medical phrasal verbs, part one and part two, some collocations in context, medical theme colloquialisms in use, and you guys can check those videos out on the Swoosh English Facebook page by going to the videos tab and then watching that to your heart is content. We also have them on the YouTube channel as well, as I know that some of you guys are also watching. Before we start the class, if anyone here is brand new to their OET preparation and they are looking, of course, to begin their preparation for their OET exam, then there hasn't been a better time for you to get signed up as soon as possible as a Swoosh English student. At the minute, we have we are giving away everyone access for free to our live OET masterclasses. Four videos presented by myself with the tips, the tricks, and the hit tips, the tricks, and the hints. Um, the best way for you to prepare adequately for your OET exam, as well as a free speaking and writing resource. If you're interested in that free resource for myself at Swoosh English, then sign up to our free OET masterclass today, guys. You will see uh, the link in the feed. It says, join us for our free OET masterclass. Get signed up today, guys, if you're interested in joining us at Swoosh English for our free OET Masterclass. It won't be around forever, so make sure that you do get signed up today. And of course, if anyone here is already a Swoosh English student or is looking for some extra help with their grammar for their OET exam, we have a new set of classes called Essential Exam Grammar, which started this week. Sherry Rose in the session that has been to the classes, she loves them. But a free set of, uh, it's not a free set of classes, a set of classes that are designed to help you with all aspects of your grammar for your OET, especially for your speaking and your writing. So guys, if you are interested in those classes, you can check out what they, what's involved with them, how you can sign up and how you can start by clicking the link to the right hand side. I would highly recommend that if anyone thinks that their grammar is their weak point in their exam, you can get signed up to those on the right. Check out our new essential exam grammar course. Okay, well, let's get into today's class. So what are the aims of today's lesson? We're going to review what everyone should already know, which I know you already know, and that they are synonyms and antonyms are. So we're going to analyze some common examples, not really in the medical and healthcare context initially, so we have a firm idea about what kind of vocabulary we are looking at today. We're, of course, going to learn about medical synonyms and about medical antonyms used in common medical settings and situations, aka ones that can be used in your OET exam. We're of course then gonna do some activities to consolidate your knowledge of this vocabulary. And then finally, if we have some time, but time is kind of tight because there's another class lined up today straight afterwards, we'll do a brief Q&A where you can ask me some questions. If the questions aren't answered today, then I will make my email address available to people so that you can ask me any questions after this class. Okay, Haksham. Haskam has asked, how can I join? Haskam, you will see the link in the feed, that's how you can join either our free master class or our essential exam grammar class. Click on the link to get signed up as soon as possible. Okay, so I have a question for absolutely everyone here. Who can tell me, first of all, what is a synonym and what is an antonym and what is the difference between those two kinds of vocabulary? What is a synonym? And what is an antonym? Can you tell me what that is? What is a synonym and what is an antonym? Keep your comments coming in, guys. Throw your comments into the Facebook feed. Throw your comments into the YouTube feed. 
what is a synonym and what is a atonym. Haskem, the uh, Swoosh English support team will be in touch with you in a second if there's an issue with that link so they can help you get signed up to that as soon as possible. So, Jibby has said synonyms are a word with the same meaning. Thank you, Jibby. Okay, I'm not going to say if it's right or wrong yet. I think you guys have got a good idea. So who can tell me what an antonym is? Is it similar to a synonym or is it something completely different? Let me know in the comments, guys. What is a antonym? Okay, Haskem has said synonym means same meaning and antonyms means the opposite. Um, Bina has said antonym is the same meaning of another word. So, and Adrian has said synonyms equals the same definition of antonyms are the opposite word. And JB has also said word with a different meaning. Excellent, guys. So that is precisely what a synonym is, and that is precisely what an antonym is as well. So a synonym is a word with a similar meaning, uh, meaning, meaning, and an antonym is a word with an opposite meaning. For example, we could say big, large synonyms. We could say big, small antonyms. Similar meaning or an opposite meaning. Okay, so let's just start off by brainstorming our own knowledge of synonyms and antonyms in the English language. So we've got a list of words on the left hand side. They include morning, sick, loud, hot, same, laugh and move. Who can tell me a synonym of one of those words and who can tell me an antonym of one of those words as well? This is just testing your range of vocabulary and how you can apply that in context to this activity. So we'll start off with number one, a morning. So who can tell me what the synonym of the word morning is? And who can also give me an antonym of morning as well? Throw your comments in, but when you are, of course, giving your comment, make sure you have the root word in your comment. For example, if you're gonna be talking about morning, have morning in the comment. So therefore I know which one you are referring to. It should be obvious, but just in case it's not, and um, it's best boy to put that word in overall. Okay, so Jamie has said daytime. That's a good synonym of morning. We can say daytime. Benita has said early and dawn, which is fantastic. Okay, very good. Anyone have an antonym of sin of morning? Who can let me know? An antonym of morning as well. Let me know, guys. So Haskam has said start of the day, obviously a synonym, and night is an antonym. Very good. Okay, Moses said sunrise is the synonym and evening is the antonym. Very good. Manny said early in the day as well, guys. Okay, great. Those are all very good, suitable synonyms and antonyms. What about sick? Who can give me a synonym of sick? So my friend with an Arabic name has said um, ill is a suitable a a a synonym, of course. Benita has said um, antonyms um, is night, obviously for morning. Okay, good. Anyone unwell, Bina has said, which would be a synonym of, of sick. Who can give me an antonym of sick as well? Ill, once again, is a synonym. Very good. Jerry Rose has said ill as a synonym as well. Anyone give me an antonym? Thank you very much, my friends. We can say healthy is an antonym of that as well. There's quite a lot here. We're probably not going to get through them all. But you can brainstorm more of these on your own time. MD Abdullah has said ill as well. Fantastic. Haskim has said healthy. Fantastic. Or well. Another afternoon for sick can be well. I am well and I am healthy. Very good. What about loud? A bit like me. Who thinks I'm loud here? I try my best not to be loud, but you can't help but be loud when you're passionate about helping people pass their exam in these live classes. I turn into a very loud person. <laughs> So, who can tell me what is a synonym of loud? I'll just wait for some of the comments to come in. Okay. Silent. That would be an antonym, right, Sehar? That would be uh, an antonym, would be silent. Very good. Anyone tell me a, another antonym or a synonym of loud? Let me know. Noise. Yes, yeah, so or noise. Yeah. Loud would be an adjective though. It can be a noun too, but I guess the, the adjective form of that would be uh, Bina, would be noisy. So someone is loud, someone is noisy, is the adjective form. Manny has said high volume. Adrian's got a long list here. He said loud, it's talkative, as in a silence. Okay, what do you think I am guys? Am I talkative or am I silent? So your comments in. <laughs> Haskim has said high pitched. I hope that's not me, Haskim. I hope you don't think I am 
high pitched. Chestina said boisterous. Once again, is that me? And Krishna has said uh, loud. Atanam is silent, noisy as well, guys. Lots of good comments coming in here. Lots and lots of good comments. We have noisy, audible. Vinita, that's a great one. Audible is a good synonym. Um, fast, MD Abdullah has said as a synonym of loud. Wouldn't say it would necessarily apply. Vast would be a synonym of gigantic or colossal or large. Vast space. You could say a vastly loud voice, maybe. But it wouldn't be directly a synonym. But I do understand what you're saying, my friend. Okay, let's do one more. We'll do hot. Who can give me a synonym of hot? And who can give me an antonym of hot as well? Okay. Haskam, you are very, 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 very kind. I don't agree all the time, my friend, but thank you. Thank you very much for your, your kind, your kind comments. Hello, Merlon. Welcome to the session. Sorry, Marlon, welcome to the session. I said hot scalding. Yep, something is scalding. It's very hot. Think of really, really hot water and you touch it and it burns you. And a synonym, sorry, antonym would be cold. Very good, guys. Keep coming in for hot. And we have scorching, Jamie. That's a great word. Scorching would be a good synonym for hot as well. We have simple ones, MD Abdullah, hot, warm. We also have cold as well. Very, very good. Okay. Isra, welcome to the session. Says it feverish. Yeah, yeah. Feverish would you could say feverishly hot, aka if someone has a fever because they are really warm, but you are really warm to the touch when you do have a fever. So it could work in certain contexts. MJ has said boiling, yeah, boiling, it's boiling hot, it's super, super warm. Of course, we have cold as well with the synonym. So we got really nice synonyms there for hot. We have scorching, we have boiling, we have roasting. Can anyone think of a really nice, complicated synonym for hot as well? We just got cold so far. Scalding is a good one for hot. Who can say one for cold, okay? Febrile would be a good one too. Okay. Okay. Flaming would be a good one for hot. Came with, yeah, freezing. Ooh, it's freezing. Sizzling. Yes, Krishna. Sizzling is a synonym for hot as well. For example, sizzling comes from when you're cooking something in really hot temperature and it might have a high fat content. You can hear it. That's where the word sizzling comes from. Cooking something that's fatty off in a piece of meat or something like that at a high temperature. Flaring would be a good one as well, guys. Very good, very good. Nice. Icy would be a good synonym, or a good atonym as well, guys. Very good comments coming in here. Loads of really, really, really good comments. Nice work, guys, and they're all highly applicable. But anyway, good, nice warm-up activity. Let's now get into our actual synonyms and atonyms exercise today for um, our OBT and medical practice. So, First of all, why is it important to understand, to build an understanding of synonyms and atonyms in OET in general? Send your comments in, guys. Put it into your own words. But of course, I'm going to reveal what they are. They help you build your bank of vocabulary. As you know, especially, uh, we'll have to produce your own language in OET, speaking and writing. But even in OET listening and reading, you will never, or at least very, very, very rarely, see the exact same word in either part A or part B and C. So the gap fill in part A and the multiple choice questions in B and C, you will never see the exact same word that you have to listen out for or you hear the word you have to listen out for or read the words and phrases that you have to read in the reading exercise. So building your bank of vocabulary will help you recognize synonyms and antonyms when words and phrases are paraphrased for the answer. So it could be really, really good in general. I think they're enjoyable. I think most people here are enjoying actually doing this exercise today, thinking of how many words that we can actually think of with the same word. As we know, there's no lack of synonyms and antonyms in English. There are so, 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 so many, and I find it really enjoyable to use them. I hope you guys agree. As I said, thanks to use for listening parts B and C and speaking, as well as part A, I'd say as well. And they will especially enhance your reading and your writing skills. So you can use different words in different contexts with that. So what do you think is the most useful aspect of synonyms, of learning synonyms generally and medically for your OET exam, guys? Throw the comments into the comment box and let me know. What do you think? Haskam has said helps in letter writing, of course, so you can actually use a, a wider degree of vocabulary. 
and that will of course improve your language skills it might even improve your cohesion skills as well you're writing things with a greater degree of flair and flexibility and using less repetition as well and md abdullah said clearly the sentence okay yes yeah, so understand the sentence clearly and also write a different degree of sentences as well and that's great well done guys so lots of good reasons i hope that you are enjoying that so far Ami de Gales, kindly be kind with the keyboard. It feels like a space being smashed in my ears. Okay, do you want me to bring down the volume a little bit, Ami de Gala? Please let me know. Or when I'm typing, does it feel very loud to you? Okay, I'll try and move the keyboard away when I'm typing, but that's okay. Um, my microphone, of course, is just below my neck, so maybe it's quite loud when very audible. Or I'll try and type really, really quietly for you. Okay, right, guys, let's get in. To our first activity. Now, we've done it already. Now we're going to do a synonym and antonym exercise with some medical vocabulary. Okay, so the first word is test. Something that might be used quite commonly in the English language is the word test. So who can tell me a suitable synonym for the word test? And can you put it into the comments, please? What is a suitable synonym for test? And can you guys put this into the comments? Okay, so first of all, what kind of word is test? Is it a noun, a verb, or an adjective? Of course, we can use different kinds of words that are synonyms, but it'd be best to actually identify what the precise word is so we can use that in our application. Okay, and a hint would be that you guys are all doing a certain test very soon. It's the one you're in the class for today, right? <laughs> okay, so we have diagnosed from CJ. We have a lab from Haskam. We have examine from CJ, exam from KMOS. We have investigation and investigation from Nuo Cabrina. Is it investigation? We have exam, evaluation. We have lab works from Sherry, examination from Adrian. Very good. We have examination from Cheston. We have lab from Shamila, evaluation, diagnostic procedure from Cheston as well. Lots of good words coming in here. More good words coming in on the other feed. We have Nusa has said check. Benita has said analysis. Uh, Jamie has said diagnostic. And Yikiap has said uh, examination. Benita has also said an assessment as well. Very good, guys. All of those are suitable um, synonyms. Very good. Some obviously aren't quite nouns, but they can also be used in the context as well. Very good. Nice. So here's a few examples I have. And you have loads more too. Evaluation, analysis, and assessment. So most of you guys got one of those or something like it. Very good. As well as some other examples. Okay, here's word number two. Healthy. Healthy. So what kind of word is healthy? Look at the structure of the word. It ends with a Y. But what kind of word is it? A noun, a verb, or an adjective? And can you then also inform me about the synonyms of this word as well. Put the comments in. CJ has said well. Very good. Thank you, CJ. First off the block. Um, Mahar has said, oh, Mahar has said trial. Yep, trial would be a word for a test as well. Yep, in certain contexts would be a trial. Very good. Okay, Nusa has said a noun. Noun is very general, Nusa. It wouldn't really be a direct synonym of that. So Vanitha has said healthy, feeling well. So that would be a synonym, a synonym, synonym, synonymized, there we go, synonymized phrase, very good. Okay, let's have a look and get up the comments. We have fit, we have well, Haskin has said well, being, Adrian has said well, Bina has said not feeling well, is that a synonym or an atonym, Bina? Let me know. Um, Manny has said diet, yeah, maybe. Diet obviously refers to what you eat, though. Whereas healthy would be just more general I'm talking about how well or healthy someone is. <laughs> okay, Moses said, all right. Yeah, I'm doing all right. Quite an informal word, but can work. Fit, very good. Okay, Moses said fit as has Cheston and said fit as well. And we have healthy. Healthy is an adjective. Thank you, Kay Moses as well. Let's see what else we have over here. Normal, interesting. Okay, we have Lanel has said well and fit as well. We have Lionel has said an analysis from previous. Okay, very good. So we have well, we have fit, we have healthy, 
we have diet, etc., etc. Wellness. Well done, Sherry. What we can say wellness too. Here's a few examples. Well, fit, which I had. And another one we can say too is in good shape. So if someone's in good shape, they're thin and they're healthy. So we can say in good shape would be a more informal phrase that we can use as well. Okay. Here's another word that you might come across in your medical uh, jobs. Acute. So first of all, what does acute mean? And who can think of a suitable synonym of this word? Manny, thank you for that word too. Well-being would be a suitable synonym of uh, acute. Now, who can tell, uh, not acute, sorry, a suitable synonym of healthy. So who can tell me first and foremost what acute is? And um, Jamie has said immediate. Lionel has said in good status. We have, um, my friend has said sudden as well, sudden. Yeah, cute. So I think we've actually identified the meaning of the word. Who can tell me a suitable synonym? Abdullah has said new. Okay, so let's have a look here as well. We have short term has said Arsha. Welcome to the session, Arsha. Bina has said severe. Cheston has said um, sudden. CJ, severe. Shamila has said recent. Sherry Rose has said quick, and Haskin has also said recent. Manny has said suddenly. Very good. Benita, urgent. Very good. Jamie said happened quickly. Brazy has said abrupt. These are all excellent, guys. These are amazing synonyms. You've got more synonyms combined than I do today. So a few examples we have are a couple you might not have had. Critical. Urgent as well, as well as severe but all of these words are amazing you can use all of these in uh in context if we're talking about you know a, a severe illness a critical illness an acute illness uh urgent illness uh a short-term illness recent illness so acute can either mean very serious or very quick or derivatives of that and both of them can be used in context in of course in the medical world as well as the OET exam as well. So here's a few more words for you, critical, urgent, and severe for a very serious disease. Okay, another word, another medical word we might have, benign. So if something is benign, then who can tell me what would be a suitable synonym of this word, benign? Keep the comments coming in, guys. You're all doing excellent today. I love it when my class is full of people who engage and throw in comments. It makes it more enjoyable for me, okay? Mm -hmm. Adrian said priority as well. That could be used in CJ. I said extreme could be used in some context as well. Okay. Critical. Very good, guys. Intensive, Lionel said. Recent, immediate. Good. Okay. Jamie has said malignant. My friend has said not cancerous. Brazy has said harmless. And uh, MD has also said malignant as well. Keep in mind, guys, this is supposed to be a synonym. A synonym so keep that in mind when we're answering these questions okay um Manny has said no harm super awarama harmless ej has said non-malignant non-harmful not harmful sabina has said not serious has said adrian hurtless kmo's hurtless isn't actually a word i understand what you're trying to say but it's not actually a word at least not formally in the English language. Harmless has also said CJ Arroso. Inoffensive has said K Mose. Maybe, you know, inoffensive is usually when we talk to if we've hurt someone's feelings or being offended to them. So you could say someone is inoffensive, they're not trying to hurt my feelings, non-malignant, etc. etc. Two guys. Well done. Okay, so we think we've actually diagnosed what benign means. Benign means when something in the medical world is not going to kill you. It's not harmful. It's not serious. So other words that we can think of for benign would be temperate, mild, or harmless, for example. We can use all of these words. A temperate illness, you'll be fine. You'll be okay at the end. A mild illness or a harmless illness. But we could also use a light illness, non-malignant. In fact, malignant would be the direct antonym of benign when something is serious, etc., etc. Very good. Okay, another word, reduce, when we say to reduce something, okay, reduces, and to, yep, yeah, I'm not going to actually say anything more in case I give away the word, 
but often um, in the medical world, we talk about reducing things quite often um, when we're giving a diagnosis. So who can tell me other suitable words that we can link with reduce, lessen? Thank you, EJ. Um, Chesson has said uh, mild, unremarkable, the previous words. Diminished, Sabina. Decrease, Ami Dagala has also said decrease. Manny has said lesson. Sherry Rose has said lesson as well. Good, good. Cut down, my friend has said lesson. Okay. Uh, decrease is another word we can use. Less as well, different form of the word. <laughs> Make small. Okay, Rose, I love you are doing you are doing so good today. You're thinking of the various different ways that we can use words, and I love your creativity in using some of those today. Mary has said decrease, Shamila said shrink as well. Lots of great examples, guys. Let's have a look at some of mine. Lesson, a very obvious one we didn't think of, lower. So we talk about, you know, reduce your calories, re lower your calories as well, decrease your calories. You might be given that if you're a doctor. And yeah, so cut down can also work as well in context as can shrink. Well done, well done. So reduce is a comparative. So we say lesson, lower or decrease. Very good, guys, well done. Two more improve. So if you want to improve something, what would be a common, a common synonym of improve? Let me know in the comments, guys. To improve. Oh, mitigate as well. That'd be a good word for reduce. Thank you very much, my friend. Limit would be another word, Maria, too. Yep, limit would be almost directly a synonym. Yep, a nice attempt. I like it. Okay. What about the new one? We have move. All right, so we have uh, titrated. <laughs> titrated, okay, yeah, that could work. Step up could work in certain contexts. Progress, get better, yep, yeah, upgrade, recover, very boost, very good. Enhance, nice one, crazy, nice one, Maria. Improve, develop, Abdullah said, strengthen, upgrade, lots of great words. Enhance, promote. Recover, get better. Wow, guys, so many great words coming in. Here's a few examples in mind. You got a few of those right. Get better, boost, as well as lift as well, depending on the context. Get better, boost, and lift. But you guys have plenty of great words coming in there. Okay, one more word. We have recover. So if someone is to recover, who can tell me a suitable synonym of this word? to recover. Okay, let's see what we've got coming in. Okay, a few more words coming in as well. Augment, enhance, lessen, etc. All right, keep them coming, guys. Heal. Thank you, EJ Bobbis. Get well. We have heal and get well. We have well healed, improve. So yeah, improve and recover actually can be synonyms of each other. So some of the words could actually be uh, duly used here. Recuperate as well. Okay, thank you, Cello and Maria. Restore, I like that. To get well, to use the phrase. Yep, Kate has said to get well. Very good. Treated Mary has said. Lamisha has said heal. Come out of. Yeah, you can come out of a, a bad situation as well. If you're very ill, so you can actually uh, come out of that as well. So I like that word. Progress. Yes, very good. To get better. Recuperate. Recombinant as well, Safa. Very good. You guys are being very, very flexible with your vocabulary today. Okay, let's have a look at a few answers on my own. Recuperate. Get well. And return to health. Okay, so we got an example here of a few direct synonym words as well as a few phrases that can be used as well. Nice work, guys. So combined with us all together today, guys, we have just created a very nice list of synonyms for some common words that are used in healthcare, and they could be very useful for you to speak and write about in your exam. So what I'll do here, guys, I'll just put that on the screen for a second or two. If you're interested, you can, of course, uh, take a brief screenshot of the task and take a note of some of these words. So you can maybe use them in your own speaking and, of course, in your own writing as well. So please let me know, guys, if you um, want to take a screenshot of that, you can take a picture, you can take an image and you can use that 
moving on. Okay, so well done everyone. Nice list of those words. I'll just keep that on the screen for a few more seconds before we move on to the next activity. All right, great. Awesome work guys. Well done on that synonyms exercise. Let's move on now to the next activity in our class. And the next activity is actually for you to brainstorm in your own time. There's a word time here, guys, in the class. We have synonyms of these words. Now I want you to think of some antonyms for some of these words as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this on the screen for one minute and one minute only because I am aware of time. I want you to write down at least one antonym for all of these words, for healthy, for acute, for benign, for reduced, for improve, and for recover. Good luck, guys, in this activity. Write down your antonyms on the page, and I'll be back in one minute. Okay, five, four, three, two, and one. Nice work, guys, well done. So we have tons of great answers coming in here for this activity in the Facebook feed and the YouTube feed. There's a lot of words to read here, but I know that you guys are obviously on fire with your suitable medical synonyms and acronyms today. So well done for your ability just to think about these words and apply them in context for this activity. So let's just have a look at some of my own sample answers. So for healthy, we have ill, sick, or of course, unhealthy, to use the negative prefix at the start of the word. For acute, chronic, persistent, and incurable. Benign, malignant, lethal, terminal. Reduce, we have increase and enlarge. Improve, worsen impair, deteriorate, recover, decrease, decline, and wane. So there are just a few examples of some of those words, guys. If you want, I'll put them on the screen here for everyone now so you can have a look. You can take a picture, you can take a screenshot, and even take a note of these words in your vocabulary diary if you have one. I strongly recommend that you do have your own vocabulary diary and you're adding words to that as you go along. Please, if you want, take a note of the words. And then if you've done so, type in yes or done to let me know that you have been taking a note of some of those words. And of course, I know I'm looking at everyone's words here. You have a large, much larger and more extensive list than mine when we combine all the answers. And it's just amazing to see everyone do so well with this activity today in the class. So I'll leave it up on screen, guys just for a couple of more seconds before we move on to uh, one more activity for the day. If you've taken a picture, then let me know by saying done. Thank you guys, thank you. A few people have typed in that and they have said done, fantastic. All right, 
Thanks a lot, guys. So um, let me know if you're enjoying this class today. Throw me a comment saying if you're enjoying this class. Uh, hopefully you are enjoying this class for one. And if you are enjoying the class, give me a like, give me a love heart, give me something lovely to let me know that you are appreciating those classes. Uh, I mean, it's a big reason why I do these classes, guys. I enjoy interacting with people. I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy seeing people give me their best in class to create a nice and fun and friendly atmosphere in the class. So I hope that everyone is feeling the exact same as me today and that it's all going really well for you. Good, good guys. So just as a reminder, before we finish off the class very soon, that if anyone came into the class a little bit later and you're interested in our free OVT masterclass, then please make sure that you do get signed up today. If you're not an OVT student with Swoosh English and you haven't yet started any formal preparation for your exam, then you can begin now with our free OVT masterclass series. It's a limited time offer and we're offering four free videos hosted by myself, giving you tips, tricks, methods, as well as the best way to approach and pass your OET exam the first time. Uh, these videos can be watched at any time, and we're currently offering a free speaking and writing resource to guys. So if you are interested in this, then please click on the link in the comment box to join our free OET masterclass today. Hope to give you guys all of those free tips and tricks in those lessons, okay? And of course, if anyone here is already a Swoosh English student or is uh, preparing with another provider, but you feel like you are looking for some extra support with your grammar, then you can get signed up to our essential exam grammar classes as soon as possible, going through lots of great information on using the passive voice for your writing, using articles for your writing and for your speaking, plus much, much, much more, guys. So if you're interested in those classes, you can get signed up today by clicking the link in the, in the comments for Essential Exam Grammar. Looking forward to having those classes. I know everyone's enjoying them who is in them so far, and they are finding them incredibly, incredibly useful. Okay, guys, so here is the last activity for the day. Here we have a joint reading and vocabulary activity. So the instructions say on the screen, look at the following OVT writing sample, skim read and find examples of words that have been used incorrectly. Can you think of a suitable synonym and antonym? There are eight in total. So this activity guys is gonna test your ability of course to skim read and scan identify incorrect details, which might be something that's very useful for your reading activity as well. Can you find words that have been used incorrectly for one? So you have to look at the sentence meaning overall, identify the incorrect words, and can you correct it with a suitable synonym or antonym in the context of the sentence? So first of all, pay attention to um, the words and context in the sentence when you're skimming, but also pay attention as well. It's gonna be a grammatical activity at the same time. When you are replacing the word, make sure you're using the right word type. Make sure you're using the noun, the verb, the adjective, et cetera, et cetera, as is appropriate in the context. So guys, it's currently 15 minutes to the hour. I'm gonna give everyone about two to three minutes to read through the text, identify the incorrect words, correct them, and then put your answers into the chat box. You can number them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Good luck with this activity, guys. And we'll analyze the answers in a few minutes. Awesome.
One more minute, everyone. One more minute. Thank you very much, guys. Well done in completing that activity. Now, let's have a brief look at some of the answers that I have suggested in this activity. Um, just so you know that some of the answers you may have may be suitable alternatives to the answers that we have here. So, of course, that is the case. But here is just some answers that I have picked out identifying the incorrect word and words that can be used instead. So let's have a look. Here we go. So let's just read through it together. Thank you for seeing Mrs. Hall, a 45-year-old secondary school teacher who introduced, uh, presented today with a two-week history of a gastroesophageal reflux with possible stricture. I am referring to Mrs. Hall to you for further exploration, investigation, and an endoscopy if required. So. We wouldn't say the person has been introduced today, we would say presented today. So even though the words, of course, uh, have a similar meaning, um, it's just the context that it's used in, okay? And you wouldn't have a further exploration, you've had a further investigation. So once again, the words are, of course, have similar meaning, but some are better used in the given contexts. Miss Hall's symptoms follow a constant course and include dysphagia for solids, epigastric pain radiating posteriorly, to T12 level and concomitant 1 to 2K weight loss. The problem not concluded, commenced. So atonance, concluded is to finish, commenced is to begin. After an upper respiratory tract infection two weeks ago for which she self-prescribed, not prohibited. Prohibit is to stop someone from getting someone. Prescribed is to give someone medication for an over-the-counter Chinese herbal product with unknown ingredients. There are no apparent signs of anxiety and no sensation of a lump. Miss Hall has long ago versus recently, of course, opposite meanings, increased her coffee consumption. It just wouldn't be that important if it was long ago. And takes aspirin two to three times a month. She has a history of dyspepsia in 2012 and dermatitis for which she was prescribed oral and topical cortisone. She didn't continue smoking 15 years ago. It doesn't make any sense. She stopped smoking 15 years ago. She drinks socially, mainly spirits, has a family history of peptic ulcer disease, and is allergic to codeine. Her BMI is currently 28.2. I have recommended that Mrs. Hall reduces her coffee, not raises it in the condition, of course, antonyms, and alcohol intake, and immediately stops taking the over-the-counter product. In addition, I have prescribed pantaprazole 40 milligrams daily. I would be grateful if you could provide Miss Hall with a definitive diagnosis, not a deliverance, not used in context here. If you require any further information, please do not hesitate to contact me, guys. So well done. Some of you have some great ideas in the text. I have been reading some of them, and some of them have been used and can be uh, also suitable synonyms and antonyms for the words that we actually have used here in the context of this activity. Here are, of course, some examples that I have 
The most important thing is that the synonyms weren't necessarily used in con the words weren't necessarily used in context, but the synonyms were better in the appropriate context or used better collocations. And some words were just not suitable at all. So well done to everyone for doing excellent in that and doing really well in that activity overall. So guys, well done. We're coming to the very end of the class now. So thank you very much for everyone spending your time today in doing awesome in these activities. It was a really, really fun class. One of the better ones I've had recently because everyone was just throwing in comments, being very interactive. And I thank you very much for showing me your abilities and your vast knowledge in using medical synonyms and acronyms as well. So for me, just big thank you today for doing so well with those activities. Okay, so guys, that concludes our final medical and healthcare vocabulary class. However, of course, we will still be running our OET mock speaking practice with Swoosh English. Some of you have been to those classes already. They are run on the official OET page as well as the Swoosh English page. And the next official OET mock speaking practice class will be on Friday, the 12th of March, next Friday at 8 a.m. UK time. So please keep that in mind. It will be 8 a.m. UK time. And then from April onwards, we at Swoosh will be doing more live classes. Aside from doing some mock speaking, please join and subscribe to our page to make sure you're up to date with some of the brand new live classes that we'll be running from April onwards. As a reminder, guys, if you are not yet a Swoosh English student, you have not started your OET preparation or you're just looking for some extra materials, we at Swoosh English have created our free OET masterclasses, four video lessons for free for you presented by myself, and you get access to a speaking and writing resource as well, all for completely free. So if you are interested, guys, get signed up today. The offer will not be available forever. By clicking the link in your Facebook or YouTube feed, you will see it there, guys, to the right-hand side to join our masterclass today. In addition, we at Swoosh are running some brand new essential exam grammar classes designed to boost you in your knowledge of grammar so that you can overcome that in your OET speaking and your OET writing, for example, especially when it comes to using relative clauses, using the passive voice, articles, et cetera, et cetera, things that I do commonly see. So if you are interested in that class, then you can click on the link to the right. So there's two options, guys, free OET masterclass or looking into our essential exam grammar classes if you like as well. All right, guys. So. That brings our class to an end today. I want to thank everybody for coming today. Well done um, for doing an absolutely amazing class. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Let me know in a few comments before I finish if you did enjoy this class. Some of you guys are doing your OET exam tomorrow. I wish you the best of luck with that exam. If you're doing it next week, I want you to wish the best of luck for that exam too. And I will see you all very soon for some more OET live lessons here with us at Swoosh English. So thanks for coming. Have a great day, everyone. Enjoy your weekend, etc., etc. whatever you're doing on your Friday, your Saturday, your Sunday. And uh, happy studying for your OET exam. Thanks a lot, everyone. And see you later.